and record. Okay, so we started recording. Okay. Um, all right, so the first thing we kind of are going to be going over is, um, and if you want to follow along, I'm underneath the USPR documentation, and it's in the useful procedures under our appendix. And this is what I'm going to be going kind of through. Um, what we did is try to add some more scenarios for you, like um, the prior annuity um, and processing through as current wages or the opposite of um, processing as prior year wages. Um, this is where we have a lot of questions that come through on tickets on these two. So we kind of wanted to add that in here. So hopefully this will be very helpful to you um, and your districts. Okay, so the first one, um, I can get rid of this thingy. I'm gonna move that over there. There we go. So the first one we're gonna be doing, which I think everybody probably understands the most, are these first two. If the employee is being paid during payroll, or if the employee was being no, is no longer employed by the district and um, being paid outside, then. Um, so I just kind of want to go through that a little bit. Um, won't spend too much time on that. Um, but I did want to um, show. Um, there is different options to the ones that maybe are new um, at the ITC that, um, you know, we have uh, quite a few different options to kind of go through where you can add this. So one would be underneath the employee dashboard where you can go to the payroll item directly for that employee. Find that um, where you need to enter that um, error adjustment for that refund. And down at the bottom, you're going to see the error adjustment down here and the employer error adjustment. So again, you have a few, um, you have this option to enter it in, or you can go to core, payroll item, payroll items. So this is similar to the employee dashboard. And then go ahead down here and then enter it that way. And in the same as the employee dashboard. Or our new option that we have under payroll item, error adjustment, employer error adjustment. So now you have these different options. So whatever you enter in for the employee, if you're using the payroll item or the employee dashboard and enter it, it's automatically going to show now under these um, two options. So you can always go through here and come back here and see um, if this refund has been ran through payroll. And it will show now. Yep, it was ran through on the date. Sorry for my files are very old. Um, but they should work for, for what I'm testing and showing you. Um, again, once it's ran through payroll for that refund, you're going to see the date over here, and it's no longer an option to delete or edit anymore. So then you know it cannot because it's already been paid. If you view it, you can see you can't edit it or anything. And you'll see that it's checked now, it's paid, and they have a date of when it was ran through payroll. If you um, do one that hasn't been paid yet, you can see that this is not checked yet and no date. So that is very helpful. So thank you, Rhonda. Yes, I think that is a very um, nice option that they um, added. I agree with you. So, um, so I just wanna show you the three different ways that you can add a, um, a refund of an error adjustment. Okay, so once we got that, now we know we can add um, different ways. Um, so what they're next, the first one we're gonna do is if an employee is being paid during payroll, um, but they need to do a refund that maybe they shouldn't have had for an insurance or something, and it's the current year, they got it just, you know, they paid in January and the deduction company came back and said, nope, she doesn't, we don't need this insurance. So they sent you a check back to the district. Now, if they sent you a check back, you put that in the payroll, payroll clearance account. If they did not send them and they said, just deduct it when you run out standing payables, then we'll need to do some, um, and then you wouldn't have to do any adjustments on that side if you're gonna run it through the outstanding payables to short, um, to short the check. So what we wanna do then is, you can, like I said, you can either enter it any way. So I have an employee here that I already entered. So I created it, entered a negative amount for that refund amount. So I got this check back. That's what I'm going to say at this point, 100 bucks, and I need to give this money back. Again, 
Then you want to run through your payroll. Great. You're initializing your payroll like you would normally would. Run the pay report. And you're going to see the error adjustment showing on your pay report now. So I'm, I'm, I'm saying because I'm going to, since I'm running it through payroll, I can actually run it. If I got the money back from the employee portion and the employer portion, say um, um, this company, this detection company is um, the employer pays a portion of it too. So you can actually refund it all at once through the payroll. Now, if it was ran outside of payroll and no longer getting paid, then we can't do the employee portion, but we'll get to that next. So now you can run, um, it will show on your statement here on the payroll report as a negative. So you can see the money come, getting coming back. Okay. And again, we put the steps in here to make sure that you, um, you're looking at every option so it's not missed. And one other thing I want to remind you, when you're running your, when you're entering that payroll item for that refund, you want to make sure for that employee, that pay cycle on the payroll item configure, um, excuse me, on that payroll item for that employee, you want to make sure this pay cycle is going to be, the payroll that you're running is going to include that. Because if it doesn't, it won't pick it up. So if you're running the first of the month, uh, second or first pay of the month, but you have the set if second pay of the month, it's not going to pick up that refund amount because it's looking at it's looking at this pay cycle. So you want to make sure you um, double check that too that that matches. Okay. All right. That's one option I do. So again, I have the instructions here um, for for the error adjustment of the employee. And again, if you need to do the employer error, you have that option too to do it because you're running it through payroll. Um, the one thing I do wanna re, um, remind you, if you're doing an error adjustment for like a um, employee that is full Medicare pickup and they have to give um, a correct the Medicare amount maybe, um, you're gonna wanna use the employer option only. Because when you, if say $20 um, needs to go back for Medicare, $20 for the employer portion, um, but he is full Medicare pickup, you're going to want to use the 692 and put the total, um, um, excuse me, just the $20, just one, even though it's 40, you only want to do the 20 um, amount because what this does then when you put this pickup amount flag here, the system automatically knows that it needs to correct the board portion that the, uh, that the employee there that they're picking up for and the Medicare pickup. So that, so just a reminder, we did put that in the instructions here that to, it will update both sides, but they need to make sure they have that flag. Now, if it wasn't board pickup and the employee paid for his portion, board paid for there, then you're gonna do both error adjustments, $20 for the payroll item here and $20 for here. So the system knows once you hit that flag, it knows that it has to do um, $20 to both sides. So again, you initialize the payroll um, and then you'll see the negative on there on the pay report, like I showed here. And then you wanna go ahead and complete, um, complete the payroll. So once you do that, once you complete the payroll, then you go to processing outstanding payables, and then it's gonna show that negative here for that employee. And this is where I was stating, now if they gave you the check back, then you're gonna to need to do a payables adjustment for offsetting and put a positive amount because we wanna take that amount off of that outstanding because we don't wanna short the check because they already gave you the money once. So you don't want to short it again. So then we're going to put that $100 back on so that way um, they get the full amount of the check that was supposed to be for that payroll. Um, now, if, again, scenario is if they didn't give you that payroll check um, and deposit in the payroll clearance, then you're going to have to do, um, don't have to do anything because we want to short the, short the um, deduction check to the company. 
because they didn't get it. So again, it just depends what the de deduction company um, option gives you. Okay, is there any questions on the one for out just running it through a payroll during um, employee payroll? Oh, one thing I did wanna add, I forgot. Um, since you're running the employer portion through the payroll, you can, it will now be included on the employer distribution. So it will get picked up and be corrected for that side. So you don't have to make a correction on the USAS side. Okay. So the next one we're going to do, oh, where's my employee no longer getting paid. So again, you have those three options of which way you wanna add the error adjustment in for the employee. So this one, since the employee is no longer getting paid, you can't enter the employer error adjustment normally like you would if the employee was getting paid because it's not gonna get picked up on your employer distribution report. Um, and it's not, not gonna affect anything because it's just gonna sit out there because you're not picking it up. So you'll have to do a, a, use adjustments under core to correct that. So again, you wanna go ahead and enter, you have to and then enter it now. Now you can run it either through, um, enter your error adjustment in like you normally would. So like I said, I already have, if I created one, I created one for um, Whitney. I put a negative um, 1,000 or negative 100 on there. And then now when you go to processing payroll item refund, you're going to see my Whitney here. And again, you can edit that if you need to make corrections to it. You have that option here. Or you can delete. Um, if you need to delete it, you have to go back to the actual employee's payroll item error adjustment. There, we don't have an option to delete it off the screen here. If it wasn't supposed to be set up, um, then you're gonna have to go back to the payroll item, to that employer, or to the error adjustment and delete it out there. So that's the only way you can delete them out. You can't delete them from this screen unless you run it through you know, market and then refund the selected error adjustment. Okay, so then once we do that, I'm going to select it, refund it. Again, you have the option. You can do it as a check or you can do an ACH electronic payment up to the district how they want to run that. PDF or XML. Again, my date is really old, so I got to change that to a date so it doesn't error me out. And process. Okay. Oh, I did XML. Oh, I didn't want to do that. Sorry. I was going to do a check, but okay. Yes, I know. And I probably can't. It's too late. Okay. So I accidentally did a, a, a XML. I was going to do a check. Um, so it, it will show you just the check name and the amount. That's it. Nothing else is going to show on that. So what we tell districts to do then, or ITC, um, go to refund. Here, you can get a detailed report of what it affects. So here is a report. So here they can exactly see, and they can print this off and include that in the check to send to the um, employee then, so they can see exactly what was um, the employer portion and the employee, what was, what, uh, what was affected, okay? Um, like when I said that um, the employer portion of the refund won't show, um, but since this these taxes were affected, this portion will you will see on the employer distribution. So just to put that out there. So okay. Another thing, if you go to core adjustments, you're going to see it. You're gonna see it here too. So you're gonna see exactly what every, um, that that refund touched. So you're gonna see all the um, 001, it touched the applicable gross affected. So this is another helpful thing for um, a district to see um, if they're questioning what exactly did um, it affect for that person, okay? 
Okay. So again, once that is ran, then it's going to put it out in outstanding payables. Again, as before, depends if they gave you a, a check to uh, for the employee or if they need to adjust the payables adjustment by that amount. And always be a positive if you're doing a uh, refund back to them. Okay. Is there any questions on that portion? If it's during a payroll, or if it's not during a payroll, excuse me. Okay. Um, sorry, uh, Vicki, let's see. So we will no longer have to manually adjust the purchase order for the board amount. Now, are you stating, um, is that ran through a payroll or is this portion for um, if it was ran through as a payroll refund? Because if you're running it through here, the employer portion is not going to get picked up for that. If, they, if, the, if the IT or the, excuse me, the deduction company gave you that $100 back, you're going to have to adjust it on the on the on the purchase order. That is correct. But if you run it through payroll as error adjustment for 100 for employee, 100 dollars as a refund, then yes, it will be. It should be picked up on employer distribution, and you shouldn't have to do anything. You're welcome, Vicky. Uh, Heidi, um, let's see. Do adjustments only show in core if not done during the payroll process? Adjustments only show in core if not done during payroll process. Do you mean here on that part? No, you were just showing us um, those adjustments that you had done for the taxes. Oh, on the on here? Yeah, honey. Yep, under core adjustments. Yep, yes. you were showing us those for Whitney. Is that yes. only when you do them outside of a payroll process? Correct. That Perfect. is correct. It will not because you're running it through payroll, so we're not going to have any adjustments done. Okay. So when you, correct. So it's only if you're running it outside of payroll. Perfect. Like, yep. Thanks, you're, Andrea. You're welcome. Okay. Good questions. Very good questions. Thank you. Okay. We'll move on to our next one. Now, one, um, where am I here? Uh, let's go down here. No, went too far, went too far. Okay. Okay. So our next one is if we are doing, yeah, employee paid. Okay. Now, the next one, this is where I think we get a lot of confusion. Refunding a payroll item without processing a payroll. Oh, excuse me. Um, let me get where I'm supposed to be here. Okay, let's try this again. Empl adjusting employer paid amount without refund processing. So this is what I was just talking about from our uh, my last scenario. Um, since we're not running it through payroll, the employer portion is never going to get picked up. Now, if they want their payroll item for that employee to be correct, to show the correct amount, um, then they're going to have to use adjustments under core. And they're going to have to um, just pick an employee here. And then um, the board's amount of payroll item. So they're gonna have to do that adjustment. If they want it to show to be correct on the payroll item itself, then they're gonna have to do this adjustment. But they're always gonna have to um, adjust the purchase order, the USAS side, because it's never going to be picked up. Even if you're doing this, it's, it's not gonna be picked up on the employer distribution report because it never was ran through payroll. So just a reminder. So we have that in here also. So if you want to adjust that employer side, you can do that. And again, we put the instructions. If you do Medicare, to remember that you only have to do it once. And it would be the board pickup amount of payroll item. So if it was $40, 20 for employee, 20 for employer, you will only put 20 in and the system automatically knows because you're using this type a board pickup amount that it's going to correct both sides for 20 amount each. So, so I think some confusion came in. They thought since it was 20 and 20, $40, no, don't put the 40 in there because then it's going to adjust it 40, 40 on each side and that's all, that'll be wrong. So it'll be the $20 refund and then it, would, it automatically knows since you're using this board adjustment that it's going to affect the Medicare on both sides. Okay. 
Um, the next one is the refund of the prior year annuity and processing its current wages. So if a district says, um, I got a check back, um, you're, we're in 2023 now, 2022, he shouldn't have been paid for um, the month of November of 2022. So they gave us this money back. What do I do? Okay, so what we're going to do, again, same scenario, put the check into payroll clearance, or you will have to um, short the check um, when you're running outstanding payables. So again, you have your option, enter that negative refund in amount in the employee adjustment. Process to process your refund. Again, if the employee is still with the district, they can put it and run it right through payroll or if they can run it as a payroll item refund, again, under our processing. Just depends if their employee is still there or if the employee is no longer with them. So after the refund is processed, um, again, you have to adjust the payables um, to make sure which way, if they got the check or if they didn't receive the check back. And what I always suggest is go ahead and run a W-2. I always say run a W-2 quarter report right away after this is done. That way um, they can catch it right away and they won't have to wait to the year end or at the quarter end and say, why am I off? And they totally forget about it. So it's always a good idea, run, run it right away. So now we need to remove that negative payroll item warning that we got out there, payroll item. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna have to um, remove those negatives by putting in error adjust, or excuse me, um, adjustments through under core. Okay. To get those, um, to remove those. Oh, there we go. So the first thing you would want to do is to remove that negative. You would do an error or adjustment for that annuity or a positive amount of what you gave to that um, employee. All right, and that will go towards the amount withheld. And doing so, that will remove that negative annuity. And then the next thing is, you to remove the next warning would be or uh, federal total annuities. Then you want to add, you want to increase the total gross for the federal, Ohio, OSDI if they have it, Medicare, and the city record if they honored that annuity. And again, we put each block, um, each step in here. Now. For the rules of the city, they want to make sure they go to the payroll item configuration and verify what does it honor. And under and, and if you go to the um, payroll item configure, um, excuse me, configuration, and, vo and view that, though we can go down here under options, and they can see exactly what it honored. Oh, excuse me. Sorry, city, city tax annuity options. Let's try that again. Um, and then you'll be able to see that. <clears throat> Most of them is going to be the non-wages, but there might be some cities that honor different ones. So again, they just have to verify what it's honoring um, to do the adjustment. Okay. So in my scenario, in my um, documentation here, mine was a non-wages 125. So I'm since they honor that, I need to do an adjustment journal for that city for the total gross for that total amount as a positive for the amount I refunded back to that employee. Okay. So once you do this, then you're going to want to um, run W-2 again, and that should balance the W-2 to have no errors in. We're completely um, wiping that out, the errors on here, and we're including that total gross now on the um, W-2 for that employee, like it happened in this year, okay? So again, like I said, make sure they run W-2, confirm it, run W, uh, then run the quarter report. And here is where they're going to be off. So this is where they'll need to make notes that they're going to get this calculated adjusted gross because we did adjustments. We're messing with the quarter report now. We got the W-2 to clear up for them, but our quarter report's going to be off. So what they're gonna be off is by that total amount of the 175.90 that I did the refund for and the adjustments. 
and it increases your total annuities on that line here. Okay. So again, so that every time they run their quarter, they're gonna be off that year to date total. So they just need to make notes every, every quarter that, yep, this is for that employee that I refunded um, and include it for this, prior, for this current year wages. But your quarter to date, this will get cleared once you run it for the next quarter. So you shouldn't be off that amount anymore then, but just on the year to date. Is there any questions on if processing at a current year wages? And if there's something that you want added to documentation that you think would be helpful, please let us know because we want to try to make it as simple as possible for you guys because I know this can be confusing when dealing with this kind of scenarios. Okay. Okay, so our next one's going to be if they did a refund of a prior year annuity and processing as prior wages. So this one probably is by more the toughest because this one includes a little bit more um, steps that you have to do. So again, same thing. Did they get the check back from the payroll, from the deduction company? If they did, it goes into payroll clearance account. If they didn't, then they need to um, leave it, leave the, it will clear itself out when they run outstanding payables. So what we wanna do is go ahead and do the employee error adjustment like we normally would. And then process the refund. Again, is employee with the uh, district still, they can run it through payroll. They don't have to do an extra step and do the payroll item refund then. They can do either way. Then once they do that, again, you can go to your um, payments refund and you can get that a report of what it looks like, okay? And what deductions it affected. So then once you do that, now we wanna go ahead and run W2. And you're gonna see that we have, we have our errors now again. So now since this is, we want this, refund amount from the prior year to be affect 2022, not 2023, we want it to affect 2022. So that means we have W-2s out already for 2022. Payroll, we're already into February. We refunded it back, but we do not want this um, refund amount to affect any sort of 2023 figures. We need to totally waste, just uh, wipe it out like it never happened. So again, you need to remove that negative for that accumulator and then um, do the positives for what happened. So what I wanna say, use utilize the adjustment that was created for that error adjustment for that refund. Because this is gonna be very helpful to your districts. So anything that was processed through as for that refund, have them just go ahead and do the description and find that employee and just type in refund. So any of any one, any of these descriptions, this is what they wanna use. And they're gonna to wanna to do the opposite sign of the applicable gross like negative Ohio. And you're gonna do adjustments for this. And it's just the opposite of what it shows here. So what the, by doing that, you're removing anything that affected for 2023. So have them print this out and then just follow this and make sure they do an adjustment for each one as the opposite sign. So of course the annuity is a negative, but you wanna be, it needs to be a positive because we're taking that off of the annuity because that was the refund amount. So once they do that and just follow this and do the opposite signs on that, that's going to clear up the W-2 in the quarter report. So once they figure that, once they back these all out, you should be able to print the W-2 and you should have no warnings, no info anymore. Should be all cleared up. If they do still get them, have them recheck their entries and make sure that they have the signs correctly, that they're backing it out correctly with the um, negative to a positive or positive to a negative. Okay. 
again, outstanding payables, once they process that, they can either leave that amount on there, that negative to short the check. If they receive the check from the payroll clearance company, then they need to do that payables adjustment for the offsetting entry as a positive amount because we don't want to short it if they already gave you that check. The other thing that they'll have to do is submit an ODGFS employer's report of wages amended for 2022 and or the employer's contribution report because now we're affecting 2022. You wanna to submit to the IRS any correct income or tax amount. You wanna do a W2C for that employee and a W3C for the district. The other thing that you will need to do File a statement to correct the information on Form 941X. So whatever quarter that affected in 2022, they would need to do a 941X to correct like the Medicare. It's like on here, we got Medi Medicare tax on this refund up here. But one thing they want to remember when they run an earnings register for this 2023 year, that's going to show that refund on there. There's no way we can get rid of that because that's history. So they're going to always see that on that earnings register. They're just going to have to make note that that refund was cleared out completely and was uh, W2C was given for the 2022 year. W-2 will only show current year wages now if they did the adjustments correctly and there should be no errors. And the quarter report will balance also after their adjustments and they should have no errors. So again, big thing is just to have them run W-2 report after, before, after, just to make sure that they're in balance, have them fix it now so that way they don't have to worry about it at year end, nine months down the road and they completely forget about it. Okay. Any questions on prior annuity or processing is prior year wages? Okay. Um, the only other thing is, which I mentioned earlier, is if they delete, if they have to delete um, an error adjustment out of here, um, again, you can't do that here. You have to go to actually the um, error adjustment down here. Okay, and then they just have to delete it here. Okay, I think I hit everything on here. I'm hoping this is very helpful for you and your districts um, to get, have the steps. And we've been working on the voiding um, of pay, uh, voiding of uh, payroll checks, um, and hopefully that will be helpful too for districts, because I know we have a lot of questions on that, and that also can be found down here. So I just wanted to um, show you that too, if you have that. We've been trying to update that as well. So if it's between calendar and fiscal year, or just calendar year, um, we've been trying to add each scenario in here in the step-by-step -step process, so it's not so confusing. Okay, um, I think that is it on the refunding part of it. Um, again, if you want have questions or any steps that you want me to go through, um, please let me know. Okay, um, I think that's all we have. We did um, video this so it taped this so I will have that out there if anybody needs to review it. Again, we have the documentation here um, under the useful procedures to follow and I think that will be it for today then. Um, if you have any questions, again, you can um, send a ticket in and we'll be um, glad to help you. I appreciate everybody. Thank you for joining us today and please have a wonderful weekend.